understanding intermediate accounting, accounting for bonds and debt instruments. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. You'll see our email and our phone number listed here. The source for our videos is the Kiso and Wygant text, which is a great text for intermediate accounting, and you can find info on it through the Wiley.com website. What we talked about in Intermediate 3 was issuing a bond at par or face amount, which is $1,000 per bond. The accounting gets more complicated when we issue a bond at a discount or a premium, and that's the topic of this video. Let's talk about bond price at a discount first. And the hint is that when we buy anything at a discount, that means that we're buying something less than what the original price of the bond was. That's the thing to remember with bond accounting as well. Here's the example. Interest rates have increased. Let's say that 10-year bonds now are being offered at 8.5%. Well, that 10-year 7% bond is now less valuable. And just like any other product or service to get people to buy it, we're going to price it at a discount. I'm going to flip over to um, Excel here, and I want to do an example of how this might look. So we have our $1,000, 7% 10-year bond. Bob Smith is the owner, and IBM, a corporation, issued the bond. Look at our first entry. The date that we issue the bond, we issue it at $980 per $1,000 bond. What's important to remember is, is that repayment is based on $1,000. So when we set up an accounting entry, a journal entry, you'll note that the bond payable, the liability, is $1,000. The reason is we have to pay back $1,000 regardless of the price that we originally issued, we, regardless of the cash that we get when we originally sell the bond. So we've got a difference between cash that we get, 980 and the bond payable, the liability that we have, of 1000 That difference is a separate general ledger account called discount on bonds payable. The thing to remember with this entry is, is that repayment is based on par of $1,000. Entry 2, the interest works the same as before. If you're an issuer, we're going to have interest expense debit, we're going to have a cash credit when we pay interest to Bob Smith, our bond owner. Same type of entry as we saw with bonds at par. What is different is, is that we're going to need to recognize an expense for that bond discount. And in red here at the bottom I said, well why is, an expense? is it an expense? Because we received less then we have to pay at maturity. We receive 980, but we have to repay $1,000 at maturity. So we're going to take the $20 that we originally posted, and we're going to recognize that evenly over a 10-year period, or $2 a year. And it's going to go into expense. Finally, at maturity, when the issuer repays that principal to the owner, Bob Smith, Bob's going to get his $1,000 back. We reduce the liability of 1000 that we originally set up as a credit up at top in number one. And we're going to pay Bob his $1,000 in cash. Let's look at the journal entries that we just saw on the prior page in terms of T accounts. And I put at the top to help you remember when you look at this screen is that when we issue a bond at a discount, we are getting paid less. The owner's paying less and we as the issuer, we're receiving less. So here's our first entry. We get in $980. We have a liability set up at 1000 We have $20. That difference between those two numbers is our discount. Second entry. We pay out cash, we have an expense. The third entry, each year for 10 years, we're going to take $2 of that discount on bonds payable credit, and we're going to recognize in a bond expense. And what I say at the bottom of the page here is that after 10 years, this discount is going to become an expense. 
so that what we will have is all these credits on bonds payable two dollars a year for ten years and the discount on bonds payable account is going to go to zero we're going to have all that twenty dollars two dollars a year for ten years get moved into the bond expense category let's talk about bond issued at a premium the opposite going back to uh, PowerPoint well remember your hint if you, anytime we buy something at a premium we consider that to be more valuable in this case interest rates have decreased this is the environment we've been in in recent years 10-year bonds now in the new environment are being issued at 6% and now that 7% bond from IBM looks more valuable so here's our screen for the journal entries bond issued at a premium we have a thousand dollar IBM bond the bond certificate is up here in the corner and again we're looking at this from the point of view of the issuer IBM in this case when we originally issued the bond 12 15 2009 we get in more than a thousand dollars in cash our liability is based on the face amount of the bond a thousand dollars so the bond payable the liability is only a thousand so we have to account for the difference between the cash and the bond payable we set up an account called premium on bond payable the interest expense is the same I won't spend time on it then we're going to take that twenty dollar premium on bonds payable and we're going to recognize that as income evenly over a 10-year period so we're going to take two dollars a year and put that into income the reason we received more a thousand twenty then we have to pay at maturity a thousand and finally at maturity we're going to get rid of our thousand dollar bond payable we're going to pay out cash that's as much time as we have on part four you'll find part five on YouTube soon remember our YouTube channel Ken Boyd STL all one word you'll have a complete list of our videos on our website which is in the third bullet point for live tutoring and chat sessions one-on-one -on -one to help you with accounting and finance courses you can go to our website stltest.net you can email or call thanks very much and we'll see you next time